begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for Motorcycle Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! And how you guys doing? Welcome to the show. It's Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. Good news, good news, man. It seems like Spotify uh, just freaking struck a deal. Struck a deal where we can use any of its catalog. So we're going to be having some special episodes over on Spotify and all the rest of the major podcasts and platforms. And it will, again, be through Spotify's help. Oh, man, am I mad? I'm mad, oh, mad. Uh, i seen uh, this story pop up. It's going to be our feature one. We've been covering that Hell's Angel case in Rhode Island. Now, they have made multiple motions, and it went, uh, actually, I believe it's the Supreme Court of the state, uh, to try to get this judge to recuse herself. Well, the decision was handed down that she don't have to do it. Now, one of the reasons why they wanted her to recuse herself is because her hubby had contact with this chapter, and it's a conflict of interest. I always said it was. I believe that 100%. Are you not sick and tired of the two-tier justice system? It is, you know what, it's so blatantly obvious, they're not even trying to hide it anymore. Why is it guys like us, the working man and all that stuff, are under one set of freaking uh, rules, why the elite and all the corporations are another? It's just not the way the American system of government and justice was supposed to be set up. One of the biggest problems I've seen over the last couple years is politicians, corporations, they get a slap on the hand or they don't even get prosecuted because they got all the power. It kind of harkens me back to one of the show House of Cards. You got two type of people in this country, ones that love to make freaking money. The others, they want nothing but power. Nothing but power. That includes your politicians. Now, this Rhode Island case, if it had, if it was involved in one of these power uh, people or people that had money, this would have never happened. I don't even think it would have got charged. But because it was the hell, a member of the Hell's Angels. And he don't got the millions of dollars or the influence. Well, uh, it's been brought to court. My worry is very concerning on this. Because you know damn well that if he's found uh, guilty, that this judge is going to throw a book at him because he put her through all these different appeals. She can say all she wants. That she won't be discussing uh, the case with her husband and I call BS. I don't care what you say if you're a man and a woman and you're in bed doing your thing afterwards. You're rolling over and you're talking about your day. And what's going to happen is the husband's going to put all kinds of innuendos into her head. And she's going to be a biased judge. And that is not fair. How hard was it for her to see the light that she is biased and just recuse herself? Hell, we got half the lefties out there trying to get uh, this uh, Amy Coney Barrett to freaking recuse herself from anything Trump. So why wouldn't it be fair for her? Her husband was on a raid, has been in that clubhouse to just say, you know what? I shouldn't be wasting everybody's time. I'm just going to pull back, especially now that the the spotlight's going to be on her, because if he gets convicted, you're looking at appeals. And, 
yeah, you might go through the state appeals and lose, but once you get into the federal level, depending on what circuit you're in, everything might, you know, not look good for you. So why the hell are you wasting everybody's time? There's no need. I, I, I'm sure you got a hundred different freaking cases to decide. Why is this one so important for you to sit on? I have to argue your husband. Your husband wants you on that case, man. And I don't care how professional uh, or, uh, you know, what kind of freaking fake uh, aura these uh, judges put on, how powerful they think they are, they're still going to listen to their husbands. And the husband used to be a cop, and he been involved, uh, I, from what I gather, with the club, you know, busting uh, people. So... He's going to keep on saying, oh, they're nothing but bad guys. They're bad guys. You got to get them off the street. We got a chance. We got a chance. That's just my personal opinion. Now, talking about the two-tier justice system, and I want to keep politics out of this. I don't care if you're a Trump follower or you're a Biden follower. I don't care. I'm looking at the premise and trying to highlight the two systems of justice here because it's important to get ahead of this and start breaking down these barriers. One day you might be accused of something and you won't have money for an attorney. You know what you usually get with a public defender on a murder charge is the death penalty. And over on Hollywood and China Dow show, we've been covering some death penalty cases where if they had a real lawyer, they would have been able to get out of what they were getting out because they were innocent. Again, it's only the powerful and those with money that, you know, wouldn't even see the light of day with that kind of crap. They probably never set foot in a freaking courtroom. But you got millions of Americans that are going through this. So it's only right that what's in the news right now Again, I don't care which side you're on. It's the point of what happened. And we're talking about uh, the empty vessel, as I call him. His son was getting paid by foreign governments to freaking launder money to, uh, uh, you know, XVP for contracts and favors. Talking about a national security threat. And the media is even trying to cover for this guy. So, now take out that old senile ass and put yourself in that situation. If it was you or I, we wouldn't have social media running blocker for us. We wouldn't have every friggin' news outlet running blocker for us like they are for him. No. Our ass would have been arrested by now and put in jail, booked, and awaiting trial. But because he has money, which by the way, how the hell these politicians, they go in for a $140,000 a year job, come out with millions. That shows you enough. And being from Chicago, I know their game real good. Uh, that aside though, they come out smelling like cookies, man. They don't get charged. You got the, our own DOJ that's afraid to charge them. But they sure to hell wouldn't be afraid to charge you. That's why I think this case with the uh, Rhode Island Hells Angels is disgusting. Disgusting. You can see the pure bias of this judge. And again, if this guy had money or he had influence, he wouldn't be there for one. Two, she wouldn't be on this case. She would have recused herself already. But that's only what they do with the powerful and the rich. In order for this country to be truly equal, people have to start fighting back. This case in Rhode Island is a sham. A complete sham. As I go through the story, and you'll see what I mean. And if you've ever seen the past episodes that I've covered... 
about this story, you'll be like shaking your head too. I just think a lot of people are tired of it. It's not fair and it's not cool. I do not think the framers ever imagined this kind of system. I also don't think they uh, thought that people would make careers out of being a politician. So, uh, another upsetting story, and you know what? Take it from a guy who does the wall of shame, you know, where we plaster all the bad cops, and one that don't have a lot of interest with them, but I do know one thing, what's right's what's right. How in the hell can you have people attacking a cop and just sitting there laughing? I believe it was in North Carolina this suspect was beating the hell out of a cop and you had everybody out there with their phones filming the shit Why he's getting messed around with. Now, if it was the other way around, you can believe these animals would have been out there screaming what he did to them. It's a disgusting story. I always believed, you know, with bikers, there was that line, we never crossed each other. But we never wanted to see one get hurt or killed either. They had their job to do. We did our thing not to get caught. That's the way it always was. And there was always an unwritten rule on the street that you never hurt one. You never killed one because it's going to bring all kinds of attention to you. But what they did to this cop is unexcusable. And I call them animals. They're animals. It is, it is what it is. You to call me whatever you want. You know, I've been getting used to the racist word, so call me that if you want. But you know what? When you do something like that and beat a man because he's doing his freaking job because you're a freaking scumbag, you're nothing but an animal to me. Plain and simple. So we got some pretty interesting uh, stories coming up. But uh, don't forget to uh, hit that uh, subscribe button, like button. Uh, we are taking donations uh, via our cash app now. Uh, dollar sign Motorcycle Madhouse. PayPal, we got that as well. And then, of course, Super Chat. And uh, I want to thank everybody that's been really hitting us on Super Chat with the donations. As well as the Cash App, man. The Cash App's been going nuts, and I really appreciate that. That goes right back into the show. If you were around for yesterday's episode in the Super Chat, you actually seen them censor Crazy's uh, comment right in front of us, right in front of everybody. They censored it, right, in, and he didn't even say nothing wrong. So that's the kind of stuff that we're facing right now. That's why you're seeing a lot of creators and a lot of hosts freaking uh, reaching out to the community because we're getting throttled down. We're getting censored like hell out here now, man. And you know what? You don't have to look far to see uh, what we're talking about with the censorship with uh, people that's not even creators, man. You got them all uh, censored in the right right now, which is dangerous to this damn country. Most people nowadays, and I've said this over and over again, they don't get their news from the media anymore. They go to third-party uh, content creators because you can't trust them anymore. And that's why I think uh, a lot of these platforms are starting to target us is because they want the ad dollars from them. And one of the conditions that they're putting on it is, well, you got to throttle down these uh, third-party creators. That's what's happening out there. Look it up, man, if you don't believe me. But uh, let's get into the news, and you'll see what I'm talking about with the beginning of this show, man, and what I'm talking about with two-tiered justice system. Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at Harley Liberty. Com, founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Okay, here we go out of ProvidenceJournal.com. This is the story that led my monologue here 
Rhode Island Supreme Court upholds judge's decision not to step aside in biker case. This by Katie Mulvaney. She's been uh, covering this story uh, since its uh, beginning. Uh, the state Supreme Court has upheld the judge's decision not to step aside from presiding over a case involving two purported members of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club due to her husband's role as a retired lieutenant with the Rhode Island State Police. He wasn't just a damn cop, not just a friggin' beat cop. He was a lieutenant. The high court on Friday declined to intervene in the criminal case against Joseph Lancia, the purported president of the state chapter of the Hells Angels. In doing so, the court let stand Superior Court Judge Christian E. Rogers' refusal to step down from hearing the criminal case against Lashia and another uh, alleged full patch member, Lance Amore, 55, due to what Lashia's uh, lawyer had argued was the possible uh, appearance of bias or impropriety based on her husband's two decade career with the state police. Rogers is married to Little Compton police uh, chief, and he's a police chief now, Scott Rains, who retired as a lieutenant with the state police in February uh, 2018 after 24 years. Rogers concluded not once, but twice, that Lancia and Amar had failed to prove that she held a personal bias that would impair her impartiality or sway her judgment. My uh, question is, well, then why'd you let this uh, go all the way to the state Supreme Court wasting, uh, you know, a lot of taxpayer freaking dollars if you weren't biased? It's obvious you want on the case. Quote, Chief Rains passed employment with the state police ending over one year before the events leading to the criminal charges in this indictment has no connection, real or reasonably perceivable. Funny. Us, uh, you know, schlucks out here think it does. To conduct of uh, this trial or the pretrial proceedings that would create the appearance of impropriety. Thus, there is no grounds for this disqualification based upon either actual bias or the appearance of impropriety. Again, you let this go all the way to the state Supreme Court when it would have been just easier just to pull away and not have uh, all this money being spent. Rogers also rejected arguments by the lawyer Joseph Acala and Jason Dis Dixon Acosta for a more that she violated court orders during the pandemic by issuing the April ruling. Rogers will continue to proceed in the hearing. Uh, the com criminal cases stemming from a 2019 state police raid at the Hells Angels Clubhouse. Last year of, of uh, 40 Fanning Lane Greenville was arrested in June 20 or 2019 as part of an investigation into reports of shots fired. Authorities say he fired a shot at Richard uh, Starnino as he drove his truck by the club, striking the vehicle but not injuring anyone. I wonder if he's going to be uh, testifying at this. I'm just wondering. Uh, wasn't he a prospect or something? And uh, allegedly, you know, most club guys are, you know, X ones don't cooperate with the uh, police. I'm just wondering. I'm just putting out there. Like I said, allegedly, they usually don't. A grand jury later indicted uh, Lancia on charges of assault with intent to murder, assault with a dangerous weapon, discharging a firearm while committing a crime of violence, and carrying a pistol without a permit. Yeah, you're in communist freaking state like I am. You got to have that permit, baby. The grand jury also indicted uh, Imor on charges of possession of meth, compounding and concealing a felony, and misprison or misprison of a felony, which meaning he is accused of failing to inform authorities that a felony has occurred. They're throwing everything at these guys, man. Come on, when's the last time you, know, you didn't call the cops? Now you're a freaking, uh, a you know, you're helping in the case. Uh, whatever, man. Uh, but anyway, you know, my question would be, again, is why'd you let it, you know, because that prosecution office, you're talking your taxpayer dollars are going to that. 
All that money being spent because this judge wants to stay on the bench. You're biased as hell if you ask me. Now, let's go to uh, Biker Dad. Uh, motorcycle parade this weekend honors murdered Florida police officers. This is not the story I was talking the about. The life of Panama City Beach Police Sergeant Kevin Scott Kite. On this day, 14 years ago, Sergeant Kite was shot and killed while conducting a traffic stop. News 13's Kirsten Mitchell was in an afternoon program as family and the law enforcement community gathered to pay their respect. Gather in this place of highest honor, pay our deepest respects to one of our own, Sergeant Kevin Kite. This is the spot that Sergeant Kevin Kite was murdered during spring break on March 27, 2005. May those of us still serving remember well the price he has paid, and may Kevin's memory stand forever as one who went down in brave and courageous service. There is no such thing as routine traffic stop, and Kevin used to tell everybody that. He was on my shift at the time. I was his lieutenant. We worked together hand in hand. Great guy. We uh, coached T-ball together with our small kids. He was, everybody always says this, but he was a great guy. Great husband, great father, great friend, and a great police officer. We miss him. It's important that his son sees this. He was just short of five. Makes me thankful that people aren't going to forget and then it's an opportunity to teach all the new law enforcement that this job is dangerous and they do need to watch their backs. He lit up a room when he came in. He never met a stranger. Watch over all who serve behind the badge that they may fight the good fight and be found worthy of their calling. And uh, it says right here, uh, again, uh, there was a motorcycle parade for him. And our, yeah, let's see here. The night uh, parade, memorial bike ride. Oh, wait, it's actually come. My bad. My bad. Uh, Saturday, October 24th. And it, lineup starts at 10.30 a.m. at the Just Jump parking lot at the intersection of Middle Beach Road and R. Jackson Boulevard. Kick stands up at 11 sharp. Uh... Goes on to say, uh, biker bulletin board, back to blue, our first responders. So, my bad, man. This parade is actually happening on the 24th, uh, Panama City uh, Beaches Police Department. Uh, here's another really good one. Uh, bikers ride to Yuli to support Bully Boy. You know, bullies so bad nowadays, man. We talk about this all the now time. Now to a story that is positively jacked. A Yuli boy bullied mm -hmm. was surprised when more than 60 people on motorcycles showed up to his home this morning. Britton Bradshaw's mother says her seven-year-old son received a head injury and a mild concussion when a 15-year-old boy smashed a pumpkin into his face. News for Jack's reporter Zach Lashley Kids was outside brutal. the boy's home and caught his reaction to the support. This is the moment. More than 100 people from Llama and Gear Banging Motorcycle Clubs. We just want to make it big for him. Today is his day. It's Triton Strong. Pulled up to Triton Bradshaw's home in Yulee. What does it mean to see all these men and women here for you? Uh, happy. Seven-year-old Triton was injured during an incident in which his mother says he was bullied by a 15-year-old boy. Triton went down to another little boy's house to play, and the boy didn't want to play, so he picked up a pumpkin and smashed it in Triton's face. Yeah, it was really upsetting. These photos show the extent of the blow to the face. This was a subsequent blow to Triton losing his father just months ago. He wants to have some companionship and friends, and it was really hard um, for me to deal with it at first, and still now it is. But today, it's all beginning to change. The gesture. Triton, I love you. The support. Man, that is awesome, man. Llama combat vets and some other ones were there llama man is an awesome organization we actually had its founder on for an interview on one of our live shows so check that one out mario uh, neves llama some badass guys and ladies man they really do good for the community and this is another example of what they do rock and roll uh now this is the story i was talking about uh, earlier witnesses cheer as nc police officer is severely beaten if you're over on the radio come take a look we're looking at a still photo right now 
Uh, Rowland police officer Michael Sale, 27, responded to a call regarding a domestic disturbance. So there's something domestic going on, and then it turns on him, and they just sit there with uh, laughing and refusing to help the guy. Uh, as the officer attempted to arrest the subject, a man later identified as Jamal Afranzo Rogers allegedly started uh, fighting with the officer. Video shot by witnesses shows the duration and intensity of the fight as Officer Sales continues to try to take the man in custody. The officer continues to subdue the subject while taking multiple strikes from Rogers. And let's be honest, man, the guy was probably afraid to pull his gun and shoot him in the frickin' face like he should have because all this crap going around right now. Uh, appears uh, from the video there are several pe people witnessing the attack. Despite one woman begging Rogers not to kill the officer, no one comes to his aid. And you wonder why shit goes the way it does out there. Let's take a look. Right now, it looks like he's rolling around. <laughs> hey. Don't, don't, don't kill the man out here. Don't kill him 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 out here. That's what's... They're laughing. I'd have pulled the gun and shot him right in the face. I ain't going. Oh, shit. Hey, man. 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 Talking about somebody from Minneapolis, if you will, who was all going to die anyway that night because he was hopped up and everything. But remember, next time you're giggling and laughing and when he gets shot, it's on you. Freaking people, man. They're disgusting now. And they wonder why there's problems in this freaking country right now. Uh, victims of fatal shooting at Orange County Motorcycle Club are identified uh, the R Orange County Sheriff's Office says an argument at a motorcycle club led to a shooting that left three people dead and one injured. Uh, we, you know, we basically gave the story. I uh, identified the victims as 32-year-old Juan Mendez, 28-year-old Christopher David Torres, and 29-year-old Michael Anthony Torres. Man, such young. They're such young, man. Sorry to hear that. Anyway, you know, they identified him, and uh, again, I know the club uh, involved, but, you know, let him grieve, uh, because that's just messed up, young. Corey Graff's all the shame right here, and uh, Enterprise police officer arrested on child sex crime pornography charges. No, go figure. Okay, are we playing here? I guess we're not playing. In Coffee oh, County, go. Enterprise Police confirmed the arrest of one of their own. 36-year-old Thomas Arreras is charged with child sex abuse and production of child pornography. <laughs> Ar uh, uh, Arias is being held without bond. He was relieved of his duty earlier this month after the complaint was filed. Yeah, a whole 19 seconds right there. Uh, police officers behind bars, let me reiterate, for multiple child sex crimes. Uh, the criminal complaint was filed against Thomas Ares on October 5th. He was employed as an enterprise police officer at the time, so the police department asked the Alabama State Bureau of Investigations to investigate the allegation. He was immediately relieved of duty with intent to terminate employment that same day. Lieutenant Billy Hoglin, uh, spokesman for the department, said they are still in the, uh, in the due process of the termination, which will be finalized Monday. Uh, SBI uh, agents arrested and charged him with 14 felonies, including the following. Parents or guardians permitting children to engage in production of a scene matter. Production of obscene matter containing visual depiction of persons under 17, sodomy in the first degree, and sexual abuse of a children less than 12. You sick puppy. I hope you get what's coming to you. I really do. 
Let's go to my final thoughts. Unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Yep, yep, yep. Don't forget to subscribe over to Hollywood and China Doll Show. It's starting to really get good over on that YouTube channel. We appreciate all the support of all you maniacs from this uh platform going over there and checking us out uh we're actually gonna be live tonight man we're gonna have some serious stuff i should get china now uh 420 up man if you know what i mean uh but was i right about this two uh tiered system of justice man are you not tired of the rich and powerful they have to abide by uh different rules than we have to there's absolutely no reason other than the bias and the want to put this guy, these two, through hell, to rem- that's why she's remaining on the bench. She wants to show them. And I guarantee if they're convicted, she's going to hand out the max because they put her through this. They questioned her. And, you know, I- I'm telling you, they're probably going to get the max if they're found guilty. You know, but allegedly, you know, I know out there that a lot of people aren't supposed to talk to the cops, especially if, uh, you know, you're a former patch member or something. You know, some people have honor. Some people have honor, but a lot of people don't. So we're going to have to see how this works itself out. Hopefully, you know, you know, people abide by the way things are supposed to be in this uh, lifestyle. And if they don't, they're nothing but pieces of crap, if you ask me. Uh, so, yeah. But uh, don't forget that memorial ride that I put on out there. Uh, also, can you believe that with uh, the video you just seen? And, you know, I'm going to kind of try to keep it calm here. But for that to happen, people sitting there laughing and laughing it up. And then you see him play that poor me damn card when somebody gets uh, jacked up. Remember that video next time you see that stuff. Because you know what? That right there is the problem of this country. Right there. Hypocrisy at its best. Hypocrisy is killing this country. It, it, again, there can't be two sets of rules. You can't be out there begging for these guys to protect your community, face life-threatening deals, and this is coming from a guy who don't like uh, having anything to do with Leo, but I'm still a, you know, a human being, and I can see what's right and wrong, and what I seen was entirely wrong. Sitting there laughing like a bunch of idiots. Why this guy's standing over there beating a guy that probably has a wife and kid. There's no more honor on the streets. There really isn't, man. Again, it used to be where you don't touch them, you don't bring heat to yourself. But something like that. And you know what? The media sure the hell ain't showing that video over and over and over again like they did the other asses. You know, the one that was all hopped up and was going to die anyway, according to the coroner that night. And then the one up uh, north from me, you know, went for that knife. God forbid they play this video, though. That's how biased the media is. It's always an agenda. That's why you guys got to start thinking for your damn selves, man. Stop listening to a tube. Shit, even the stuff I say, make sure you go out there and verify for yourselves, man. Just don't take it from me. And you shouldn't be taking it from the mainstream media either. They're a freaking joke, man. That was just insane there. It really was. And it's unfortunate that you got people in this country now laughing at that kind of stuff that's how far left and uh communist this country has really become it's gotten out of control there isn't american values anymore in this country this new generation don't even know what a value is 
But before I get off in that tirade, <laughs> man, that one's got me going because, you know, there's right and there's wrong. And that was totally freaking wrong. And you don't see it in the damn media. You'll see it in the right leaning uh, media, but uh, God forbid. Ain't on CNN or MSNBC, the ones that were crying the whole time during the writing. Ain't there. Ain't on ABC or any of that. Hell no, man. It don't fit their narrative this close to an election. Anyway, you already know my feelings on that uh, officer with the porn. Ch You're sick, puppy, man. You really are. How do you? How does sex offenders really freaking live with themselves? I do not get it. How do they? That's all right. Hopefully, uh, prison justice will give you a two punch salute, man. You know, one for being an ex cop and the other one for doing what you did, man. You're just a sick freaking puppy, man. You know. Ugh. Anyway. Going to be live tonight uh, at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time again on Hollywood and China Dow's uh, channel. Make sure you go over there, man, because we have a good time on these lives, man. I know people have been saying they've been busting the gut left and right. You never know what's going to come out of my damn mouth on one of them live shows. You really don't. Uh, I get going, we get going, man. But anyway, man, appreciate you guys checking out the show. Rock and roll, man. I'll talk to you guys later.